talk a little bit about the future SOVs uh, and the SOV market. And we will be based on, on our vision of leading to the green and technology transition in the maritime industries. Uh, VART is in a very good position to help on this transition based on the fact that we have the full value chain. Uh, we have both the design, we have the technology, uh, and we do also have the shipbuilding, meaning we really have all parts of the value chain needed to, to innovate in these new technologies. Uh, we do have ship designs across uh, many segments, and we are able to learn across these uh, and they get synergies across. Uh, but today I will talk about what we call the BART 4 series, uh, which contains our renewable vessels. And first and foremost, I will talk about the SOVs. I, I'd really like to brag about us having the biggest order reserve of SOVs in the world. Uh, this picture is growing and growing, which I really like. Uh, and many of these vessels are already uh, containing some innovative technology for the transition into the future fuels. Uh, and the SOVs are extremely well suited for alternative fuels. Uh, they are operating with low power consumption on, on predictable uh, areas with already infrastructure in place. Uh, they have short times out at sea uh, and, and they have some hours off duty every night. It's also an industry which is extremely focused on reducing their CO2 emissions uh, and are also is easier to regulate because each wind park can have their requirements for zero emission solutions, hydrogen solutions, and so forth. And we have been looking into all the different energy carriers and different technologies for this kind of tonnage, and we see that you're able to implement all of them with the different pros and cons, uh, giving a different endurance. All the way from batteries giving you hours of endurance up until methanol solutions giving you basically months. Uh, the most important energy carriers are the hydrogen-based uh, the derivatives, either ammonia or methanol or hydrogen. All of them have their challenges, all of them take more space than diesel. And as you see from the, from the graph in the bottom, they have different maturities. Some of them are not ready to implement just yet. So those we have then to prepare for as far as we can. Ammonia is a hot potato and we have implemented ammonia ready in some of our ship designs uh, and we, we see that as a very interesting product for vessels with fewer people on board. It is also relevant for SOVs but it has quite some challenges for basically a floating hotel. We see a lot of our vessels these days being prepared for methanol mostly because it is the fuel that is most mature among these uh, fuels um, and it is easier to implement today uh, with the technologies we have. And we might end up in the situation where basically in the Betamax versus VHS, the fact that methanol is now a front runner coming before everything else might mean that it ends up being the dominant fuel in the long run. Hydro all these other fuels are hydrogen derivatives, so why not use hydrogen directly? It is then uh, more efficient uh, in the overall picture, and it is fully possible there are solutions both with, with compressed hydrogen, with liquid hydrogen, or LOHC. We have currently vessels under construction which will be pre prepared for LOHC operation. Uh, and it is a fuel that is uh, very pure, but it is very challenging to store on board. For a vessel that is operating in a predictable trade, uh, and in, a, in an area with already prepared infrastructure, nothing can beat batteries. The batteries will have efficiency of close to 90% from produced electricity to rotating propeller, compared to around 30% for methanol, ammonia, or, or, or other derivatives. So wherever you can, batteries will be the best. The big disadvantage is an extremely limited endurance, where we are talking hours of operation rather than the days or weeks or months which you really want to have. So just to also show you some examples of what we're working at, we are, as I said, working on all of these different energy sources, different energy transition uh, transformations with, with combustion engines, with fuel cells, 
but I just want to show some examples of what we're working with. So hydrogen is an extremely interesting case. We are looking at liquid hydrogen, and it is within the main dimensions and the functionality of the SOBs today possible to have a reasonable endurance on hydrogen. 15 days of, of endurance will give you sufficient endurance to do, continue working in the same logistic basis as you are already today. And this you can do with two large uh, liquid hydrogen tanks and a fuel cell combined with batteries. And still today we would prefer to also have some diesel engines as your backup or your emergency because it is still in a pilot stage, these, uh, these energy sources. But we expect such a vessel to operate 95% of the time on hydrogen as long as it's available. And such a hydrogen power station will then consist of a fuel cell, as I said, combined with some diesel engines as purely as emergency backup, or if you're not able to get hold of hydrogen, and then with batteries. The other case I want to talk about, uh, which is highly relevant for a vessel operating in a, in a, in a inf dedicated infrastructure, especially vessels working in O&M phase, is batteries. That's a very mature technology. We can fit that in today. Um, and, and it is, as I said, the most energy efficient overall. So here is an example where you can have space for 25 megawatt hours of batteries. We have already some concept for some vessels under construction with space for this much ba battery on board, which will give you sufficient for a full day of operation. There will then be diesel engines for backup, uh, but you will base the most of your operation on batteries. So we have the tools to do a lot of optimization of your of your uh, of your uh, uh, operations, and where you see that you can do operations in full day as long as the weather is benign or just above average weather in many of these wind parks. Uh, if you are going up to the more extremes of a wave height of three meters. Uh, it's still possible, but then you need to stop in the middle of the day to charge, which is also possible within many of the logistics uh, uh, planning to the, as of today. And then you might say, how, how can you manage on 16 hours? Well, you need to charge offshore then. And luckily, Bard is developing an offshore charging system, meaning that as long as you're able to do the transit, pull it electric out, you then are able to recharge as soon as you get out there. So just to sum it up, we, we do truly believe that we will see many of the first movers into alternative fuels in the SOV market because it's such a suitable platform and suitable operation for these applications. And we do have ready both vessels under construction and concepts for all of these different types of fuel. Thank you all.